Hello everybody and welcome back to the third and hopefully final part of the question and answers and this time it's all about books, bookish questions, booktube questions. So let's get started. I got a lot of questions relating to my first favorite book, when do you did you start reading, um, when did you discover your love for reading, childhood reads, stuff like that. So I, I started reading early. In fact, I, I can't, if I think about it, I can't really remember a time when I didn't read books, which of course there was a time because I didn't start reading until I could read, obviously. But it's it's something that is so so much part of my life that I just can't really remember a time that I didn't read. And when I was a child, I read, yeah, the typical child children's books. And one of my favorites was obviously Annette Blyton and her St. Clair's series, which was translated into, into German because I, I read only German then when I was little. And I loved that series. You have to know, though, that the series was translated and sort of transformed into German. So the, the school was called not St. Clair's, but Lindenhof, and the setting was early 60s and not the 40s in, in England. But I, I just loved that series. I read that again and again and again. When, you, when I then go on a little further, if, if you ask me, when did you start to realize that what books meant to you and your favorite authors, then I would say that that was in my early teens and I discovered French authors because my mother's library had a lot of French authors in German translation. And the, the first book that was one of my favorites and I, I read it, I, I don't know, I must have read it 50 times or something, was uh, François Sagan, Bonjour Tristesse. And after that, I read all her books. I loved her when I was in my early teens. Can't quite understand that now when I reread her, but I think it was just in, in the teenage, you know, 12, 13, 14, that those were the kind of books that, yeah, pictured a life uh, as an adult, as a woman that I really, really enjoyed. Another question was about... Uh, books at school. Yes, I did have to read lots of books for school, but but as an avid reader, I didn't mind. We read um, the, the German classics, of course, in, in for the German classes, you know, Goethe, Faust, but also the earlier ones, Walter von der Vogelweide, um, uh, Hesse. I, I discovered classics um, mainly at school and in English uh, we read Pinter and in French we read uh, little pieces by Balzac. So we, we had to read um, quite a lot, if, if you, if you want to call it that, and I, I, but I, I, did in, in, I really enjoyed it. Another question was about books that changed my look or my view on the world significantly. Um, and... If, if the question is about early books, the first time I realized that, I think after my Sagan phase, I went on with the French and I had a Simone de Beauvoir phase. And I think her books, especially, um, what's the English title? Um, All Men Are Mortal, um, changed my look on the world in the sense that for the first time, I think I realized that a book can be more than a story, a plot, that you can actually have a philosophical or political view incorporated in a book. And I thought that that was fascinating. And very important for me at that time were also nonfiction books, again by Simone de Beauvoir when I read The Second Sex for the first time, when I was, I don't know, 15 or 14 or 15. I only understood half of it, but I, I thought it was an important book and I, I reread it uh, again and again in order to understand it, in order to understand my position as a woman in the world. So th those were the kinds of books that I thought were important. And a related question was books that um, I hold dear in my heart and visit again and again over the years. Well, as I said earlier, when I was in my early teens, early 20s, that was 
François Sagan, Simone de Beauvoir, certainly I reread and reread and reread those books. Um, later on, I discovered uh, Janet Winterson. Um, I reread re her a lot of times. I don't reread as much now anymore um, as I did when I was younger. When I was young, I, I really looked at my bookcase and was, when I wanted to read a book, I was looking for a certain atmosphere that, or a certain feeling, a certain emotion that the book uh, would evoke in me, and then I would reread that that book. Another question or a couple of people asked, how many books do you own? And honestly, I don't have a clue. Um, I don't know, a couple of thousand here. I'm now filming in, in Cologne, but I also have books in Amsterdam. I have books at my mother's house. Uh, there are a couple of books in storage, mainly work-related books, um, and I never counted them, um, so I, I don't. I just don't know. All I can say is I'm very bad in getting rid of books, so they, as you see behind me, they tend to accumulate. Another question was about genres or topics that I like to read and what I look for in a book. Um, if, you, if you follow me on this channel, if you watch my videos, you know that I switch genres regularly. I, I read non-fiction, literary fiction, science fiction, crime. Um, I don't read much romance, um, but I, I'm not bound to, to, to one genre. And the topics that interest me, that, that really depends on the sort of book and also uh, the question, what, what I, do I look for in a book? What elements make a good book for me? That really depends um, on, on the kind of book I, I want to read at a particular moment. For instance, if I want to be entertained, if I want to have a fast-paced uh, thriller or crime novel, then what makes it a good book for me is the plot, uh, the language it should be written at least, you know, not not completely horribly. Um, in literary fiction, I, I often look for books with um, a personal struggle. I, I like books that um, tackle subjects that are difficult, you know, like disease or death or. Um, trauma, difficult, difficult things to, to grapple with as a human being. But sometimes I just pick up a book um, because the blurb sounds interesting and I like the cover. I'm, I'm shallow like that. And I, I enjoy it very much and it, it offers me something new or, or something to think about. But uh, I'm also happy to be entertained with books. If I if I read uh, crime or sci-fi or YA, I don't necessarily need the book to change my look on the world. And a related question to to books was whether which authors or author I would like to invite to a dinner party. I, I'm not much of a party person. I I don't like many people you know, at once. I, I find that very exhausting. So I'd rather have a one-on-one -on -one and as you might have gathered from previous answers, I, I really would have liked uh, to have dinner or coffee with, with authors like Mary McCarthy or Virginia Woolf or Simone de Beauvoir just to, you know, to talk to them. But I don't know, maybe it's good that it's not possible because it, it might be a disappointment <laughs> for, for both of us. So I don't know about that. Uh, a couple of people asked about uh, books in translation, um, and that's a very interesting topic. Uh, first of all, I, I really like if I can read a book in the original language, but as I only speak three languages, three and a half, as I said, a little French, um, that's very limiting. So if you want to read diversely and broadly, you obviously have to read in translation. And I never thought about the, the translation as such until I uh, had written my own books and gotten the translation to look at and was horrified how bad the translation was and how much um, correction it needed, if you can, if, if the books were translated from German to English, I can 
speak English well enough to see that there are mistakes there and mistakes from, you know, missing sentences or really translation mistakes, um, easy translation mix mistakes, um, but also uh, mistakes that, that changed the atmosphere of the writing. And I started to read books in translation and then in the original English and German, for instance, and I discovered that even with famous authors like Jonathan Franzen or um, uh, Ian McEwan, translations are often really, really bad. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how, why, but probably because the translators are paid so badly, um, but it's it's horrible sometimes when you when you I, I read Mag Wulitzer's The Interestings and I really liked the book and I wanted to give it to friends in German and I read the German translation it's just horrible you, it, it, it's it's the language is bad the translation is full of mistakes so I have a, a difficult relation with translated books because I have to read them if I want to read I don't know a Spanish author or something but I now know that if I don't like the language, if I don't think it's well written, then it might not have been the author, but it might have been the translator. I was also asked questions about my reading goals for 2017. Um, well, you can obviously check Goodreads because I'm on Goodreads and I set the goal this year very ambitiously for 200 books to read because I want to push myself a little. And other than that, or books I uh, particularly look forward to. Uh, I'm I'm more a go with the flow reader. I don't have TBRs um, unless I, I'm. Uh, it, it's a read for a book club, a Goodreads book club, or something like that. That had to be has to be read in a certain month. But otherwise, I'm really more like go with the flow. What I do is I look for uh, new releases and I'm always looking forward to discovering new authors, so uh, authors who write f the first novels. Um, and another project for, for this year is that I want to read more about quantum physics and the brain. So these are basically the goals for 2017. And another question was about my uh, bookish uh, pet peeves and I have one that is, I have difficulties to separate author and book. If I see an author in an interview and I really dislike him or her, I have difficulties enjoying the book. I have even difficulties reading it. Um, and also, if I know something about the author that really irks me, uh, I tend to not read the books because I, I don't enjoy them anymore. And for the more mundane um, pet peeves, that's about texture. I, I really like books that have a, a, a bit of a rough cover, not a, not a smooth or, or glittery cover. Uh, floppy, the, the floppy English books I like best. And font. If, if the font, I, sometimes I, I buy a book uh, because I really want to read it, although I already know in the store when I look at the font, I c can't read it. Um, so that, that, that's my bookish pet peeves. And fittingly, we will end this uh, third part with questions about Booktube. Why did you join? What do you expect from Booktube? Questions like that. Well, I, I did join Booktube first only as a commentator. I, I discovered Booktube, I discovered that people talked about book books on YouTube, and I left comments. Um, and then at a certain point I decided, well, maybe it's a good idea to also be really part of that community and make my own videos. And the reason for joining Booktube first as a commentator and then as a creator was that I missed book clubs. When I was younger, I always had was a member of real life book clubs, so we would meet and you know discuss a book, and I missed that. I missed the communication about books, and also I thought Booktube was a fantastic way of discovering new authors because I follow a lot of Booktubers. I watch a lot of uh, videos from Booktubers who read books that I've never heard of, and I think that that's really great. I, I don't have much of an outlook of expectations from from Booktube. 
I think um, since I made my own videos, I feel more part of, of the community. I think I, I have the feeling that I know people better or I get to know people better now that I also make my own uh, videos. But I don't have this grand idea about what Booktube should become. Um, a, a related question was, how do I feel as an older booktuber? Because most of booktube is very young. And I think that's fantastic. I mean, I said in a previous video that from my university work, what I enjoyed most was the connection with younger people. And it's the same with booktube. To see younger readers and what they read and what they are interested in and what they like about books or dislike about an author, I think that's so interesting and that really broadens my horizon. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to miss younger booktubers, although there are, I'm not the only old booktuber, there are some older people on booktube and I enjoy them as well. So this was the last part. Um, there are some individual questions that I thought would take too much time. The video would get even longer. So I leave the answers to those individual questions down in the info box. And as you might have noticed, I also didn't answer the, the many questions I got about German books because I thought I make a separate video. I wanted to make a video about German Gems, my series about German books anyway, and I will answer those questions related to German books in that video. So this was where all the questions and answers, I hope you've enjoyed it. You stuck with me long enough and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.